Hey, it's Norm from Tesla.com. I'm here in Hollywood, California at the Lowe's Hotel. It's Oculus Connect, the first ever Oculus convention. And it's also my first chance to use Gear VR. That's Oculus's partnership with Samsung to develop a headset, an HMD using the Samsung Galaxy Note 4. So I'm about to sit down and use Gear for the first time. I'm gonna share with you some impressions of what the 1440p display looks like, how the controls look like. But I'm gonna run through a bunch of demos and I'm gonna see whether 60 hertz matters, whether or not having positional tracking matters, and what the experience for this prototype is like for Gear VR. So I'm gonna step in and I'll see you in a second. Bye. All right, so I just got out of that Gear VR demo. For people who don't know, Gear VR is a partnership with Samsung and Oculus. The Galaxy Note 4, which is a 5.5 inch 2560 by 1440p smartphone, really high resolution smartphone, goes into a shell that Samsung developed. And what's interesting is that it's very different from the Oculus DK2, which is what I've used so far, and that it's a tetherless experience. Oculus wants to develop VR for both the desktop, where you're connected to a powerful computer, but also for mobile because there's a lot of freedom, the freedom of movement. Now it's still a sit down experience, but what Oculus is trying to sell and Samsung is trying to sell is the idea they can swivel all around. So a couple challenges, I want to talk about, uh, and Oculus knows what the difficulties of Gear VR are, but no persistence of vision. This is a 60 hertz panel. That's because it's tied to the Samsung phone and John Carmack in his keynote today talked about the limitations of the hardware. In the DK2, it's actually a Galaxy Note three screen, but there's some overclocking they did, some low level hardware tweaks they made to get it up to 75 hertz on the Note 4, 60 hertz. Now, does that matter? In the demos I saw, not really. It's not as good as the 75 hertz, noticeably, as the DK2, but it wasn't making me that motion sick. The demos that did make me motion sick or gave me more awareness of the flickering that you get with the 60 hertz was something like Lucky's Tail or they had an underwater demo where it was bright, and I, when I tried to move my eyes to the corner of the screen, you can definitely see some of that flickering. Now, Lucky Tail is a good example because I've tried that on the DK2, and I've also now tried it on Gear VR, and Gear VR, the second limitation it has is no six degrees of movement. So with VR, when you put on the goggle, you can turn, you have rotational movement, you can look around, you can tilt your head, but there's no translation movement. You can't move your neck forward, you can't lean forward. That's just a limitation of that Note, the Galaxy Note 4 sensors and what they have built in. So when you play something like Lucky's Tale, which is actually designed for six degrees of movement, where you can dive right in and look at your small little avatar running around, and you can't do that in the Samsung version, that was a little jarring, and hopefully they'll program the game to make it a little better. In terms of resolution, so 1440p. Now, even though it's a 1440p OLED pentile screen, it did not look all that much better than the DK2's 1080p screen. Uh, part of that is because the software is actually in the background, on the phone, the graphics are all being rendered at a lower resolution, 1K per 1K per I, basically a 1080p resolution, and then upscaled, stretched out. Now, in some demos, for example, the cinema demo, uh, what you see in the, the, uh, the video trailer, that is actually using all the pixels. So in the development, even though the seats around you are being rendered at low resolution, the screen is actually maybe like 960 pixels wide when it's filling most of the screen. Um, and in things like panoramic video or panoramic photos, that's using the full 2560 by 1440 split in half screen. It is higher resolution, uh, the brightness and colors are good, but it's not a huge jump over to DA2, at least from the, the like 15 minutes I've, I was using that demo. Um, the photo stuff, panoramic photos, that content looked good. Panoramic video, though, I thought was still tricky. There was a, a Cirque du Soleil uh, stage demo, and I was trying to look around, and again, I was trying to move my head around, and because there's no six degrees of tracking, uh, six degrees of freedom for the tracking, it really, it really took me out of that experience. The, the best stuff was in fact the cinema demo. Uh, this is a virtual cinema, so I'm, it's as if I'm sitting in a home theater, a really nice home theater, or a really nice you know, cineplex, and then in the frame 
is a movie trailer playing, at least in their demo. And I was, as I was moving around, it's as if I was in an empty theater by myself, and I could imagine avatars moving around. It was a seamless experience. I really like that demo. A ton of other stuff, I didn't get to see everything they had demo there, the interface, so the touch interface I thought was okay. I think they need a physical button to move forward. Right now they have a physical button for backward and a tap goes forward, but it was too easy to hit that tap. And also I could not wear it with glasses. They took me, told me to took off my glasses to put it on and there's one focal dial at the top, but because my eyes are of different qualities and I, need, I have like a astigmatism, uh, it didn't actually focus all the way. I had to tweak it from time to time to check my left eye, see if I could see those subpixels, check my right eye, see if I could see those subpixels. Pixel fill is a little better. Uh, you get less of the screen door effect with that 1440p, but it's not night and day from DK2. Um, so a plus on the 60 hertz side, I thought that was, it wasn't as bad as I thought it could be, but also the 1440p wasn't as good as I thought that could be either. Now I know a lot of you out there aren't gonna go buy a Gear VR. Maybe you don't have a Samsung phone, maybe you're waiting out for the Oculus consumer version. But I think what Oculus and Samsung are doing with the Gear VR and what John Carmack is developing with the Gear VR is gonna be interesting. It's gonna have effects throughout the VR space. So while optimizing uh, VR for the Galaxy Note 4, for Android, a lot of the tricks that John Carmack has come up with may apply to Oculus on desktop. Or, or VR in general, or even your smartphones. So one of the things he talked about is maybe not needing to render uh, fully in the full resolution, maybe not needing to get your 8K by 8K pixels. You don't need that because your eyes focus in the center. So using mit mapping, that's the, the idea of rendering textures uh, at a full resolution or rendering it a little blurrier for increased efficiency, uh, maybe only when, when you eye, your eyes look at the center of the screen, that's where this image is gonna be sharpest, and as the image goes so farther to the edge of the screen, that can be a little more blurry. Uh, stuff like interlacing, that's a concept that I know arcade fans or old CRT users are familiar with. It was technology built into old LCDs and old CRTs, the idea of rendering every other line. And it's not like VR is gonna use every other line, but maybe every eighth line, or every 16th line, or a programmable interlacing model where you can take out lines as you render to simulate on a 60 hertz screen, 120 hertz, or 240 hertz. Because it's gonna be a long way to, before any mobile phone developer develops a 120 hertz or 240 hertz panel. They have no incentive to, it's expensive. But if we can trick that 60 hertz screen, overclock at 75 hertz, get it to 90 hertz, and then use programmable interlacing or a similar technology to simulate a 240 hertz panel with very minimal tearing, then that starts to get exciting. And that will have applications on smartphones, on regular smartphones outside of VR. For example, on an iPhone, you can record 200 FPS video, which right now when you play at 30 frames per second on a 30 hertz panel, uh, that's slow motion. That's eight times slower than reality. But imagine recording a video at 240 FPS and then playing it back at a simulated 240 hertz, and you get hyper real video. So I'm really excited about what John Carmack, what Oculus, and what Samsung's doing, at least on the Gear VR side, it's gonna spread the word of VR. It's gonna work out a bunch of kinks, power efficiency on the screen stuff, and the software side, get VR more out there, and it's gonna just make the Oculus consumer version that much better. So we'll have a lot more from Oculus Connect. I'm Norm from Tested, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.